In part 1 we looked at the GoPro Hero 3 Plus black and silver package contents, pricing and had an inspection around the external hardware of each unit. We saw that, other than the inclusion of the Wi-Fi remote with the black, both packages were pretty much the same and both cameras looked near identical. In order to examine the differences between both units further, we need to look under the hood to find what each unit can actually offer the end user. Welcome to Ifty's Tech Corner where in part 2 of 3 we'll be looking at the GoPro Black vs Silver software. At this point we know we have different lenses in the black and silver GoPro cameras. The lens in the black offers an increased number of features and options over the lens in the silver. Let's take a closer look at what this actually provides. Switching both units on simultaneously, we notice the silver is very slightly faster than the black in startup. This may well be due to the more basic level software running on the silver. Notice how even though I'm using the exact same 32GB SanDisk Extreme memory cards in both units, with the same 1080p 30 frames per second wide resolution set, the silver provides longer recording time. This is because the black records an overall higher quality and sharper image than the silver, hence creating larger file sizes, reducing the overall amount of recording time we can fit on the memory card itself. We'll explore this further in part 3. Looking at shooting modes, both cameras give us the exact same modes. We start with the video recording mode, move on to the photo mode, then on to burst photo mode, time lapse, and finally onto the settings. No differences here at all. It's when we enter the settings that we start to notice where the differences really exist. Considering the most popular video mode to start with, if we head into the possible resolutions we see that the silver only has 1080, 960, 720 and WVGA modes available to it. The black on the other hand extends right up to recording in 4K resolution, that's 4 times higher than 1080p. We also notice we have a few extra options such as the 1440 and also the great super view mode. Coupled with the resolutions you'll also notice the black has a range of extra frames per second options available. In the most popular 1080p resolution for example, the silver here has 30 and 60 frames per second options available, whereas the black has 24 and 48 frames per second options in addition. Both cameras offer wide, medium and narrow field of view options. No differences here. Finally, the black also has a low light mode to improve video quality in lower light conditions by automatically dropping frame rates when required. We'll put these head to head to check on quality in part 3 of this series. For the moment, let's move on to photo settings. In photo mode we can set the photo resolution. The black goes right up to 12 megapixels whereas the silver goes up to 10, but bear in mind the black does have an extra 7 megapixel medium setting in addition. This continuous photo mode is not available on the silver whatsoever. Here we can set how many shots are taken per second when the shutter button is kept pressed. We have several options to choose from, but this feature is not present on the silver edition at all. Both cameras have a burst mode. The silver can achieve a maximum of 10 shots in a second during burst mode, whereas looking at the black we have several more options going all the way up to 30 shots in a second. That's quite a major difference and if you're looking to produce creative shots or wish to shoot very fast moving objects then you'll really benefit from the 20 extra shots per second in the black. Moving on to time lapse mode, again another very creative setting, we see both units have the exact same settings here, no differences whatsoever. Taking a look at the actual camera settings, we start with the camera orientation settings, again which are the same for both units, as are the spot meter settings. We then have an extra setting with the black for taking images at set intervals while taking video. This is very useful for getting some great shots while recording video, but note the silver does not have this option at all. This may well be a deciding factor for many users. Moving on, both cameras have a looping video mode which will override older video automatically and we then come to the exit screen for the silver while we receive the great protune mode on the black. This is the one mode that really defines the black edition as the more professional level videographers can record in camera raw for post editing later. If you're after protune it's available on only the black edition range. The camera setup options allow some more basic level settings that control how you want to use your camera. These are exactly the same on both units. So we have the default mode, one button mode, NTSC or PAL settings, on screen display, camera light status, sound indicator, auto off settings and the date and time settings. 
nothing different between the silver and black here whatsoever. It's the same when we come to wireless. Both units use the same wireless chip, which is faster than the previous Hero 3 by quite a degree. Speed has been tested in another video, which again I'll leave a link to in the video description below, but both units are able to connect to a remote or the GoPro app. No differences here. Finally, we have the card formatting option, again the same for both the silver and black cameras, before coming to the exit screen. So to summarise the software and capability differences between the GoPro Silver and Black Edition cameras, we have a much greater range of video resolutions and frame rates with the Black, as well as a low light option which is not available on the Silver. The Silver has a 10 megapixel sensor whereas the Black is capable of shooting images at 12 megapixels. We have a continuous photo mode available on the Black which is again not available on the Silver whatsoever. Burst photo mode is available on the silver at a maximum of 10 shots per second, whereas with the black we get a huge increase to 30 shots per second. The black is also able to take still images at set intervals while recording video at the same time, whereas the silver is unable to do this at all and does not have this useful feature. Finally, we have the very powerful ProTune feature available on the black and not on the silver. Looking at it this way, there are several large advancements to the black over the silver, and I for one find them very useful to have, leading to a very powerful unit. However, what you need to decide is whether you will actually put these extra features to use in your projects, and whether the extra cost justifies having them. So far we've seen how the hardware differs between the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Silver and Black Editions in Part 1, starting from the package contents right through to the actual camera itself. In part 2 we've taken a detailed look at the software including the extra modes and options available to the Black Edition to better understand the differences between both camera units. All we have left now is to actually test the quality difference between the two units under real world usage. Join me in part 3 where we'll use exactly the same shooting conditions to really test which sensor is better than the other head to head in the final showdown.